я твой работник. Hello everybody and welcome to the inaugural airport update of the Tampa International Airport on the MSP Aviation channel. So, yes, another new airport coming to the channel. Uh, there's been a lot and um, it's kind of, you may have realized that, that there have been some airports that have kind of been neglected a bit. And so this airport is going to come with another schedule change, um, some some scheduling updates. And uh, so the first one is that uh, Guam is, is going to be cut, unfortunately. And uh, I love doing Guam. It is a really cool airport, but nothing has really changed there in the past year, and um, it's just not that very interesting. Also, it's not a great model that I made. That was one of the first ones that I made, and it it's, it doesn't it's not doesn't look too great. <laughs> so, I'm not saying that Guam's going to be going away forever, but Guam is going to be put on the the back burner for for a while. Um, not to say that there's never going to be another Guam update again, but I, there are none, none scheduled anytime soon. And then the second schedule change is that Kalamazoo is going to become bi-monthly uh, or quarterly. We'll see. That one also hasn't changed all that much, uh, but it is an airport that I really like to do, so I do want to keep it around uh, as it is, it is. It's a fun little guy. And then also St. Martin is probably going to be bi-monthly as well. But, uh, yeah. Oh, another thing for Madison... Um, I'm thinking of maybe upgrading that to Milwaukee, so feel free to comment down below whether you'd like. Uh, I'll address it in the next Madison update as well, um, but I mean, I, I would like you guys to put some input on whether, on if you'd rather see Milwaukee or Madison. Milwaukee is a bigger airport, which is kind of why I want to do it, just because it is pretty similar to Madison. Uh, it's They're both in Wisconsin, um, but Milwaukee is a lot bigger, uh, so you, I could include more aircraft in there and make the updates a little bit more interesting, hopefully. So, yeah. But now we'll give it a little tour of the airport, because after all, this is a brand new airport. It's actually the airport that I've used the most, other than MSP, because I've flown in Tamp into Tampa pretty much every year of my life, uh, except for last year, which I, I didn't fly into Tampa. Um, I flew out of Tampa, I suppose, because I stayed New Year's in Tampa. But um, Yeah, it's been a while since I've been back here, but it is a really interesting airport. So this is Airside A right here. Uh, Silver, United, JetBlue, and Spirit operate into here, um, and this this one is. I mean, and you can see it's kind of sh how they're kind of shaped. All the airsides are shaped in a different way, but this one features gates three through eighteen. So there you can kind of see the layout of that one right there. And now we'll move over here. So so actually the way that this airport is set up, I should probably address it. Is there's like one main terminal in the middle, and then they have trams that branch off to all the different air sides. It's like Orlando. So that's kind of unique in, in that way. And then here is air side C. This is, so this airport is a hub for Southwest Airlines. This is where Southwest Airlines parks. So this is the largest out of the air sides. So you can see not a whole lot of Southwest aircraft. I didn't really pick a very busy time to do this airport update, unfortunately. So we don't have a whole bunch of aircraft, but in here we have Breeze, Alaska, uh, Southwest Sun Country, and Abello. So that's the biggest out of, out of all of them, and also the one that I've used the most, I believe. Moving over here, this is the future side of, of Airside D. It's not in here right now, so this is currently, it's kind of just a place where you can just like have your plane sit around for a while if it's waiting for later service, or it's also used for cargo aircraft, but not I don't think for FedEx or UPS, or at least not FedEx. So that's not super realistic, but it will get the job done for now because I don't have enough place I don't have enough room to put in a cargo apron. This is Airside E. That mainly serves Delta, but they also get service from Air Canada and Frontier. Most of this you're going to see Delta using. Then this is Airside F, which has everyone else. This is where this is the international uh, airside, but also American parks here. But yeah, you see British Airways, uh, Discover, Discover Airlines, WestJet. Um, they have a whole bunch of like. Caribbean Airlines as well to fly in here, which we will all see in later updates. But that's that's pr the, pretty much the basic layout of this airport. So we'll begin in Airside A and then progress our way through the airport.
our first aircraft right here is of course the Florida based, based airline Silver Airways. This one arrived in from Nassau, Bahamas, and you'll be heading out to Key West after staying overnight. Very nice right there. Our next aircraft here is this United 737 MAX 8. This one arrived in from San Francisco, and you'll be heading back out there today on the turnaround. Here we have some more United action right there. In the back we have the 737-900 in the Eco Skies livery. This one arrived in from New York, Newark. And it will be on the turnaround once again back out to Newark. Our next aircraft here is the United Max 9 in the old Continental Globe livery. This one arrived in from Chicago O'Hare, and it'll be heading out to Washington Dulles. And here we have our JetBlue A320 in the mosaic tail. This aircraft arrived in from New York, Newark, and it'll be heading out to White Plains. Actually, kind of a funny story behind uh, the JetBlue mosaic tail. This is the first airport that I saw, uh, I, I believe any JetBlue aircraft, but I distinctly remember seeing the mosaic tail and thinking that it looked super cool. Um, I, I'm not really sure why, but I still think it is one of the coolest JetBlue liveries that they had. Uh, and I remember seeing it here at Tampa. And then I got the, since Darren made a single plane uh, with the JetBlue mosaic tail, I remember getting that one and being super pumped about it because it was the same aircraft that I saw at, at Tampa. And, um, yeah, so I still really love this livery, and it's one that this is the first place that I, that I saw this aircraft. So, yeah, I right in from Newark, and we're heading out to White Plains, New York. So, a pair of New York flights there, but neither of those really jet blue hubs in New York. It's not like JFK or anything, so that's kind of fun right there. But, yeah, lo lovely aircraft right here, and great to see it here at Tampa. And now into the Spirit Gates here. Uh, these are our last two aircraft in the... A airside, airside A. Beginning in the back there, we have the Spirit A320, arrived in from Las Vegas, Harry Reid, and we'll be heading out to Richmond, Virginia. Actually, the last time I flew out of Tampa, I was flying on Spirit on an, an A320 to Atlanta, where then I connected on to an A320neo to MSB. Speaking of A320neos, here is the Spirit A320neo. This one arrived in from Detroit, and it will be heading out to Indianapolis. And that will wrap up airside A. So the Southwest gates aren't going to be too busy today, unfortunately. Um, they can get quite busy here at Tampa, but like I said, the time frame that I picked for this update didn't really work out. There were a few spe specific aircraft that I wanted to include in here, but um, it really wasn't that great of a time frame, uh, considering that uh, we don't get to see a whole lot of, bunch of Southwest aircraft here all in a, all in a lineup here. But uh, we do have four to get to today, so we'll begin with these two. We have the 737-800 right there. Um, this one arrived in from Chicago Midway, and we'll be heading out to Baltimore, Maryland. Then behind that one, we have the uh, 737-700 with split summit harwinglets. This one arrived in from Chicago O'Hare, and we'll be heading out to Denver. So yeah, both Chicago Midway and Chicago O'Hare service here. This is one of the Southwest destinations from O'Hare. Um, the Southwest has been operating out of O'Hare for whatever reason. They've actually has a have decent operation there out of T5. For some reason, even though there's Midway, but I guess everyone wants to use O'Hare. So Southwest decided to capitalize on that. And uh, so, yeah, cool to see Chicago O'Hare and Chicago Midway out of Tampa on, on Southwest. And pulling it into its gate right here, we have the South Australian 737-700 in the heart livery with blended winglets. This one arrived in from Atlanta, Hartsville, Jackson. And then later on tonight, we'll be heading out to Indianapolis. Finally, in the way in the back there, we have the... 737 MAX 8 here for Southwest Airlines. And this one arrived in from Baltimore, BWI. And you'll be heading out to Houston Hobby. Airside C also sees service on Alaska and Breeze, as well as Sun Country and Avella, but they're not appearing in today's update. Beginning in the back there, we have the Alaska 737-900. This one arrived in from Seattle, Tacoma, and it's on the, on the turnaround tonight. And finally here in Airside C, we have this Breeze A220-300. This one arrived in from Providence, Rhode Island. We'll be heading back out there. Another turnaround. This is actually one of my other model airports, so that's pretty cool to see there. Uh, route between those two on Breeze of all airlines. So that is what we love to see right there. And that'll conclude Airside C, which features... Um, I mean, I guess Breeze is technically a hub airline here. So Southwest is the, is the main... I mean, I guess Southwest doesn't call their airports hubs. They're the focus city for Southwest Airlines and... Probably would just count as a focus city for Breeze, but 
they're really both hub airlines and they both use the same airside so it can get quite busy here in uh airside c if there's a whole bunch of breeze flights and a whole bunch of southwest flights but today it's pretty light all right now moving into the heart stands here our little makeshift cargo area so beginning in the back there we have the ups md11 this one arrived in from louisville world port and we're heading back out there on the turnaround the next down here we have the 767-300 Filling in for 757-200, and this one uh, on the turn from Columbia, South Carolina. And then across the alley here, we have another 767-300, this one for FedEx, and this one on the turn from Memphis today. Finally, our last aircraft here, this is a very special one. So this one was just ferried over uh, from Europe. It went Hamburg to Edinburgh, Edinburgh to Bangor, and then Bangor to Tampa. So this is a delivery flight for United Airlines. This is one of their brand new Aeros A320neos, A321neos rather. Um, so that's really cool right here. Um, didn't know that they, did, that they did these through Tampa. I'd imagine this one will be heading out to Chicago at some point soon, or at least one of United's hubs for before it enters revenue service. But uh, yeah, I'm assuming, I believe that there's uh, an Airbus or United, like, hangar at Tampa or something that they do maintenance here. Um, I've seen a lot of unusual aircraft that are kind of just chilling out. I saw a Thomas, after Thomas Cook went under, there was a Thomas Cook A321 hanging out at Tampa. And I'm not really sure why, but I think there, they, there's some sort of Airbus or there's some sort of facility over here. I'm not entirely sure uh, like who <laughs> specifically it is. Um, but that's what I'm assuming where this A321 went. So it wouldn't, this is not realistic to where this would be, but neither are really any of the other aircraft behind it. Um, but yeah, really cool to see that for United Airlines. Glad that they're getting some more A321 Neos. Really, really hot aircraft. I love it. Recently got me the 1 to 200 scale version of it as well. So yeah, it is an absolutely gorgeous aircraft. I don't know why I'm saying that so much recently, but it's true. It is gorgeous. And so that'll do it for our uh, Hearthstone gates here. Now moving on to Airside E. All right, now we will begin with the Delta gates here. We actually have more Delta than any other airline in today's update, which it's normally not going to happen. You're going to normally see a whole bunch of Southwest and not this this much Delta, but it'll that's just how the timing worked out for the, today's update. So this isn't, I guess, the best picture of what a regular Tampa update is going to look like on the channel. But anyways, our first aircraft right here is this Delta 77-200 in the breast cancer awareness livery. Uh, this, of course, has since been repainted uh, for Delta, so this livery isn't really accurate anymore, but uh, it'll get the job done for today. It was actually, the actual aircraft was without winglets though, so that is realistic in this sen in that sense. Uh, this one arrived in from Atlanta Hartsville Jackson, or such as Aviation's airport, we'll be heading back out there on the turnaround today. The next down here we have the Delta A321. This one arrived in to, uh, this one arrived in from New York LaGuardia, and you'll be heading out to Detroit Metro later tonight. Taxiing in here, we have this Delta 77-200. This one is another one that is doing an Atlanta turn today. This one has just arrived and is taxiing to its gate, which will be Echo 62. And yeah, this one on the turn from Atlanta, Hartsville-Jackson as well. And even more with A321s over here. We will begin with the A321neo there. This one arrived in from Los Angeles LAX. And we'll be heading back out there today on the turnaround back out to LAX. And then the next one, we have a CO. Another one right here. This one actually doing the reciprocal of the previous one. Uh, this one arrived in from Detroit, and I'll be heading out to uh, LaGuardia. Realized it wasn't really in focus there, but there, there you go. The uh, Delta A321 CO. So that'll do it for our Delta aircraft, five Delta aircraft in today's update. So that is very nice to see right here. All right here we have this American 737-800. 
This one arrived in from Dallas-Fort Worth. Today, it'll be on the turn heading back out to Dallas with the same flight number, both AAL 2512. And right here, wait a minute, JetBlue again? What are they doing over here? I thought their airside was airside A. Well, that's because this flight is an international flight. This one arrived in from Cancun, Mexico, and you'll now be heading out to New York JFK. But for whatever reason, they don't tow it over to airside A. I, I imagine that they would, uh, but yeah, they, they, they just had they just left it here. And unlike every other JetBlue flight, this one left from airside F. So that is very interesting because uh, normally they're pretty strict on like this airline parks at this airside, and like they, they even say it, or I should say, they used to say it in the announcements on the tram, so they got rid of it, and I was really mad that they got rid of it from the tram announcements, because I loved it when they said all the airlines to the, each concourse on the tram announcements, but um, yeah, this one, <laughs> unusual that it's over here, so maybe it would have been a bit confusing to the passengers, but I'm sure they all made it to the, to the plane okay, I mean, I mean the gate agent, or the ticketing agent rather would say you know where to go I, I, I would hope at least so none of our JetBlue passengers got stranded in airside a because uh yeah you can't really transfer here at Tam at tampa or you can't really you can't really uh have a connection to lay over here um because that's that's not really how they that's not really how they designed it to work but uh yeah very interesting to see JetBlue over here and uh so yeah two JetBlue aircraft today and both of them in different air sides who would have thought Pushing back here, we have this Discover Airlines, A330-200. So they are one of our European uh, international airlines to fly in here. Tampa also gets service from Edelweiss, uh, British Airways, and Virgin Atlantic. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have an Edelweiss model. I, I have them on 1 to 500 scale, but I don't have them in 1 to 400 scale, of course. Um, they're a really cool airline, and I'd love to feature them here at, at Tampa, but... Unfortunately, I don't have a model to represent them, but we do have Eurowings here, Eurowings Discover, or I guess now, now just Discover. That's going to take a while to get used to. Um, so yeah, Discover here, they operate flights to Frankfurt, pretty similar to how it worked at uh, at Fort Myers back, back when I did those airport updates. Remember those days? That's been a while since uh, Fort Myers has, has been on the channel. This is, this is effectively the Fort Myers replacement. Probably should have said that earlier on, but this is... The long overdue replacement for Fort Myers um, is finally here. But yeah, here is the Discover service out to Frankfurt, looking absolutely gorgeous on the 330-200. And our final aircraft in today's airport update is a Swoop 737-800. Wait, Swoop? I didn't think they were a thing anymore. Well, this is operated by WestJet. <laughs> uh, but yeah, great to see Swoop making an appearance here. Um, what a gorgeous aircraft, and so Swoop has actually a, kind of a funny story at Tampa, because they, they, they did operate um, to Tampa, They're, this is like one of their first destinations when WestJet made Swoop a thing, um, and yeah, they flew to Tampa very consistently, that's actually why I bought this model, because I saw it at Tampa on my many visits there, um, and I just thought it also looked really cool, so yeah, that's pretty fun to see swoop back here they actually i believe they went over to st petersburg uh for a bit and then of course they were incorporated back into WestJet. and now they're back here at tampa uh of course not properly because this is a WestJet flight but it's using a swoop aircraft so that's that's pretty that's a pretty fun story there um so i'm glad that we can get this aircraft in here um I don't know how long it's going to take for WestJet to repaint all of their Swoop aircraft into WestJet proper, uh, but great to see Swoop making another, in another appearance here. Ironically, ever since they uh, were incorporated back into WestJet, I've been using the Swoop aircraft more and more after they're no longer a thing, which is very, very, very ironic because, um, well, I mean, the last time I used the Swoop aircraft was at the uh, the Thunder Bay Airport. Once again, filling in for a WestJet flight that was just using the Swoop aircraft. So, I mean, it's great to get in here because it is a very beautiful model. This is the first NG release of it. Um, this was released back in, like, I want to say 2020. Uh, and it is, is, is definitely a unit. But yeah, that'll do it for today's airport update. Hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, welcome to Tampa International Airport, TPA. Yeah, it's not T-I-A, T-P-A. <laughs>
the Tampa airport social media accounts uh, make that very clear that it is TPA and not TIA. Uh, TIA standing for Tampa International Airport. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that was, uh, that's the first update in the bag. So expect more updates from this airport. Uh, hopefully with more Southwest aircraft in them as well, because I want to definitely utilize a big portion of my Southwest fleet at this airport. Of course, this being a Southwest hub. So expect probably expect that in the next update. But uh, yeah, that'll do it for today. So hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night. Auf Wiedersehen.